Johnson was born on June 7, 1964, right in the middle of an ongoing fight for black equality. The civil rights movement can be defined as a mass popular movement to secure for African Americans equal access to and opportunities for basic privileges and rights of U.S. citizenship. Although the roots of the civil rights movement go back to the 19th century, the movement peaked in the 1950s and 60s. African American men and women organized and led the movement at national and local levels. They pursued their goals through legal means, negotiations, petitions, and nonviolent protest demonstrations. The eye-opening moment for blacks was the death of Emmett Till. Emmett Till was an African-American boy who was murdered in Money, Mississippi at the age of 14 after reportedly flirting with a white woman. Till is from Chicago, Illinois, visiting his relatives in Money, Mississippi in the Mississippi Delta region when he spoke to a 21-year-old Carolyn Bryant. Several nights later, Bryant's husband, Roy, and his half-brother, J.W. Millen, went to Till's great-uncle's house. They took the boy away to a barn where they beat him and gogged out one of his eyes before shooting him through the head and disposing his body in the Tallahatchie River, weighting it with a 70-pound cotton gin fan tied around his neck with barbed wire. Three days later, Till's body was discovered and retrieved from the river. Oh, the movie. I... Um, you know what, when I was real young, my mother and them used to always talk about Emmett Till. They used to always talk about Emmett Till. And i never forget that one time they showed his picture in the Jet magazine. I was probably about six years old. And that we just never, they, that, that left an indelible mark in my head. Malcolm X was trying to appeal to one group and one group only. He was trying to hit home, targeting those in the inner city. Leland Johnson talks about how Malcolm X influenced him as well as inner city Oakland. It's been a long, a long time coming. Blacks in the inner city were tired of, of being beat on. They were tired of being discriminated against. They were tired of being talked to a certain way. Um, they were tired. And if you put, if you, if you, you know, take an animal, take a, take a dog, and if you corner a dog, or if you corner a cat, and you tormenting that cat, sooner or later that cat is just gonna get tired of it and come out at you and attack you. And that's the same situation that was going on with black folks. If you, you, you know, sooner or later, you was gonna get tired of being, getting treated like you was being treated and something was bound to happen. But I know a change gonna come. Eventually, eventually, I think that would have been more of the, but, but if you remember Malcolm X's mentality, as he matured, it changed. And he had went from the saying, um, okay, let's just, black people help black people. He went to say, human rights. He became more of a human rights person. So it's weird because he started to kind of have a mentality like Martin Luther King, but it was more like, I'll fuck you up if you do something to me though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you really know if you really do your studies about um, Malcolm X and, and try to understand where the, who the man really was about, before he was killed, he was about human rights. He wasn't about, it, it went far from just being fighting for black people. Even though black people was going through some shit, he realized there were other people going through shit too. And he wanted to lump that in with it. Oh, and, that, and I think that was a big reason why um, his demise needed to be needed to happen. I think the establishment felt like that needed to happen because he was getting ready to reach a, 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 a great, a huge mass of people. He was getting ready to reach those people. And him and his ideology along with Martin Luther King was starting to go like this. So they had to get rid of him. The Black Panther Party was founded in 1966 in Oakland, California by Huey Newton and Bobby Seale. The party's original purpose was to patrol African-American neighborhoods to protect residents from acts of police brutality. The Panthers eventually developed into a Marxist revolutionary group that called for the arming of all African-Americans, the exemption of African-Americans from the draft and from all sanctions of so-called white America, the release of all African-Americans from jail, 
and the payment of compensation to African Americans for centuries of exploitation by white Americans. At its peak in the late 1960s, Panther membership exceeded 2,000 and the organization operated chapters in several major American cities. I could last for long. Actually, it was fun. I remember it, it being fun because I used to take karate classes there. Um, we used to go there to watch movies. Um, we used to play, play in this big, it's, it's called the Son of Man Temple. It's a, it's a church now on, on East 14th and 62nd. It's that East big Oakland. church up on the hills? And no, it's the big church. It's a big church that was on East 14th. Uh, we rolled by it one day and I showed you. And you know, you just glassed at it. You was real small. But it's a big church and we used to go in there and play, go on different little creep spaces and play. And it was just a fun, it was just a fun, fun place to be. And, and they taught us a lot about ourselves, educated us a lot, a lot about black pride. And um, you know, for, for families that was like mine, you know, my dad was out of work, so they they fed us. They made sure we eat, ate, you know, and and made sure that, you know, we were taken care of. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover called the party the greatest threat to the internal security of the country, and he supervised an extensive program, COINTELPRO, of surveillance, infiltration, perjury, police harassment, and many other tactics designed to undermine Panther leadership, incriminate party members, and drain the organization of resources and manpower. Through these tactics, Hoover hoped to diminish the party's threat to the general power of the structure of the U.S. or even maintain its influence as a strong undercurrent. When they got rid of the Black Panther Party, that, that was like a lifeline to, to every black person being proud for who they were. You know what I'm saying? That was like our, when they took that away from us, it was like our community was lost. People get ready as a train of coming. When I was around maybe 12, and you could see a definite change, because it went from, it went from a lot of love and peace and different concerts being thrown in the hood to I think within a year drugs was in the community and it was a totally different um, situation. They didn't have after school programs, all those left. Um, all of the Oakland neighborhood basketball leagues left. Um, they stopped getting a lot of funding and the drugs came into the, and the guys went from basketball to to the street corners. Um, become more black conscious. When I say become more black conscious, um, find, find pride in who you are. Because I think um, our youth today want to be included with someone else so bad that they kind of lose their identity or they kind of feel like you know, to like I'm proud of my black skin. I'm, I'm proud that I'm dark as I that that I'm as dark as I am. But there are some some young black people out there that don't feel good about themselves because of their dark skin. You know, um, read more, read more. So people get ready for the train to join. Come